get into this video, I'm just going to thank the channel sponsor Magic Shine for sponsoring me with the lights that I've pretty much been using for a year now. It's been absolutely faultless. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description below. You can see a couple of images of them on screen here. But go to lights, not had a problem. Can't really say much more than that, to be honest. Good value. Anyway, this video is about why I believe winter bikes are a massive fad. I'm going to go through my current setup as I've been riding it for really crappy roads like this, which is the conditions we've got at the moment in the UK for best part of four or five months now so let's have a look at the bike right let's get through this one pretty quickly this is not clickbait i genuinely believe winter bikes they're a fucking waste of money uh this is my all year round road bike it's a giant tcr advanced sl i think is what they call it and it's got the isp which is not the most comfortable of things you've seen this bike in loads of videos before and i've done a few things on it to winterize it now you might think I hate on wider tyres, I absolutely don't, I think when the roads are rough and they're wet, they are much faster, at the expense of rolling resistance. Let's not kid that, the industry will lie and say they're faster in all conditions and they have lower rolling resistance, they certainly don't if you want to lower the pressure so much to get good comfort, but the fact that you can lean on them more, they're more comfortable on rough roads, they grip more in the wet when you lower the pressure and you risk less punctures, on a rough course, on a wet course, they're faster, can't argue with that. Hold up, let me explain and be clear. That bit I just said about wider tyres having higher rolling resistance, that's only if you move away from ISO skin tension or hoop stress when you're comparing it against a skinnier tyre. If you want more comfort, prepare to lower the skin tension of the tyre and the hoop stress, the rolling resistance will go up. You can't cheat the physics. At ISO hoop stress or skin tension in the tyre, even though the pressure may be different, the rolling resistance and the comfort is proven to be empirically around the same. There'll be a video on the pure aerodynamics and the rolling resistance side of that argument coming up when I've processed more data. I've done the filming, I just have a load of data processing to do for that video. But on a rough, rough day when it's wet and it's muddy on the roads, fat tyres, lower pressure, higher rolling resistance, actually a faster overall. Lower suspension losses, less kicking your body up and down, easier to put the power down, you can lean on it, more confidence, and overall they're just generally faster. TCR, the bike I run all year round, I don't really believe winter bikes are needed because, you know, carbon bikes don't really wear out. The only thing you might need to change is the cassette and chain. Maybe after a really harsh winter, new cassette and chain. Now you have to go through many, many winters of buying new cassette and chain before you can justify the whole price for a winter bike, a whole nother bike. These things, these bloody bikes are so expensive. Why would you not use it all year round to get your money's worth? Because the product cycle is maybe two or three years anyway. If you only use it for half the year, for one product cycle, you've only got a year's worth of riding out of a bike if you keep it in the garage for half the year. So I really don't understand the excuse for winter bikes. Like I'm all for N plus one, like I said, but why wouldn't you ride your best, lightest, most racy bike all year round if you can make it comfortable, which the wider tires do. Obviously, I'm not gonna race on these tires. I'm not gonna do any road bike TTs on these tires. But most bikes now can fit large chunky tyres. These are 32 mil uh, GP 5000s. I've just done a aero test with these on these Polaris Ascent 42 millimeter wheels, and the results are actually quite surprising. But that'll be another video when I process all the data that's coming up. That'll be a really juicy one. Aero and pure rolling resistance on smooth tarmac only. Up that argument. Anyway, uh, what else have I done to this bike to make it wintry? Um, obviously, it might look a bit odd. I've got my 180 mil disc adapter on the back and not on the front and that's because I've been doing the aero testing on these wheels yesterday and I didn't want to kind of put a massive plate on the front to skew the results if that skews the results so I'm keeping the 160 mil on the front to kind of keep the results consistent because not many people are running 180s only me but normally yeah that big disc would live on the front um, you might think that block is insanely big it is it's an 1134 and I tend to fit that in winter it doesn't have you know the, the nice gaps between the gears that you might expect of a 12 speed cassette or a smaller 11 speed cassette but the 1134 when I'm really bonking on like a long cold winter ride and I just don't have any power in my legs if they're too cold I've basically got a one-to-one -one here so I've got a 34 on the back and it will work with this Dura Ace 11 speed DI2 mech absolutely fine just wind the B screw in a little bit so I've got a one-to-one because -one, I've got a 52 34 set up on here this outer is worn to buggery actually I need a new one so yeah, I've got a one-to-one -one here. That's a 34, 52, 34. Shift's absolutely fine. No worries about that at all. No worries about the jump. Chain length uh, is a little bit difficult to get right. You've got to get it spot on so it doesn't go completely slack in the small. 
but on the di2 i've actually limited that it can't go into the last two cogs when i'm on the small at the front so that's never a problem i never get a slack chain or if you did get a slack chain and you wanted those last two gears just wind the b-screw out and put some more tension on and that's really it 1134 cassette which i wouldn't really run in the summer if i'm racing or doing road bike tts and and the wider rims and tires which you know you can see the results for on the smooth road and the aero results for in a video coming up very soon and that's really about it. You might think, what the hell's all that baggy shit under the LISP clamp? That is heli tape, technical heli tape, AKA seller tape, because this ISP topper is still wobbly as fuck. Torrents and all that shit. Always has been, was on my last one. Um, up front, IG Sport computer, video on that coming up very soon. Or you may have already seen it, depending on the order of these uploads. It is Christmas Eve today, so I'm not gonna do too much. Uh, this has been faultless. Absolutely loving that. I used to just use my watch, but Having a head unit is pretty pretty nice. I used to have a Garmin, died, never replaced it. Like I said at the start of the video, thanks for everyone this year for the support and more to come next year. More nitty gritty, nerdy stuff coming up on the channel. Cheers and see you in the next one.